Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. Today's episode is all about this jumpsuit. <laughs> um, I've gotten a lot of questions about my jumpsuit and yes, I did make the jumpsuit and I will be showing you the footage of that in just a moment. The reason why I make this jumpsuit is because when I'm here working in the shop, I get covered in sawdust and I really wanted something that was not either prison orange or mechanic blue. Even though the pattern I used for this jumpsuit was a men's jumpsuit pattern, the men's jumpsuits tend to not be perfectly fitted for females. I did go in and alter my measurements a little bit when you are purchasing the men's versions. Yes, you could buy one of those and tailor it but why not make it if you can and then also I get to pick whatever colors I wanted it to be in. I am by no means a seamstress. I do like to sew. My first sewing lesson was from a friend who said the pedal is like the gas on a car. You can step on the pedal and go and basically that was my lesson of sewing and since then I've just kind of been messing around with the sewing machine and the majority of my sewing has always been for things like sculptures. This is actually the second jumpsuit I have made. I did make a purple version of this jumpsuit with the same duct fabric. I actually wrote down some tips that I think were kind of important to talk about after having made it for the second time. I'm gonna go through these tips while I run through the footage on how I made the jumpsuit. Number one, read the directions. I followed a sewing pattern, it was a quick sew, an easy pattern, but there was really important content in those directions and a lot of times people just gloss over things and are just like, oh, you know, let me just give it a breeze through. It's really important to read directions when you're dealing with a sewing pattern. So number one, read directions. And then after you've read them, read them again. And then read them again. Number two, iron the tissue pattern before you do your cutting and then iron your pattern pieces after you do the cutting. The first ironing is going to relieve any of the wrinkles to make it much easier when you do the first round of cutting, but by the time you've cut up all your patterns, it's gone wrinkly. Hitting them again with that next pass of ironing will ensure that when you go to transfer that pattern onto your actual fabric you're using, you get accurate cuts. Number three, follow the directions on the layout of your fabric. Fabric has a grain. So when you look at the directions, it's going to tell you if you have a 45 inch wide fabric to make sure you lay the pattern pieces specifically in a certain direction. That is because fabric does have a grain and it has to do with shrinkage. So if you're dealing with fabric that might shrink or move on you through the washings, you want to make sure that you're following the grain so that it all shrinks in the right direction. You may look at your pieces and go, oh, I can get this little tiny piece squished in over here if I twist it this way. But doing that can create a massive mistake later on because when you go to wash the garment, if that one particular piece shrinks funky, you may end up really with weird ballooned areas all over the piece after you've made the piece and you've washed it a couple washings. Number four, use a straight edge and a rotary cutter to cut both your fabric pattern and the fabric itself. There's gonna be some areas where the pattern has curves and you're going to need a pair of regular scissors, but you will save your hand a lot of agony and you will cut down on a lot of time if you can use your rotary cutter and a straight edge to get a lot of the, the cuts done. And most patterns, especially for a straightforward pattern like this, will have lots of straight lines. So using that rotary cutter when you can is really helpful. It's also helpful to use that straight edge when you're laying out your pattern. Sometimes you might want to, you know, have that straight edge just to draw those chalk lines. Using those two tools can be a major time saver. Number five, cats love fabric. Be sure to give your cats lots of attention and to completely procrastinate the tedious task of cutting. Number six, mark your fabric with numbered pieces that correspond with the pattern. I know a lot of people like to sew through the actual tissue patterns, but in this case, because this is, requires such a heavy material, oftentimes the tissue pattern paper and the fabric that you're actually sewing onto may require two completely different needles. 
Number seven, double your thread. If you have really thin thread that you're using or just to ensure that you have a stronger stitch, and this is actually in the direction. I just took my bobbins and I, I threaded two sets of bobbins, threw them on the top of my sewing machine to use rather than my spools, and I fed both of those lines through the needle at the same time so that every stitch I was making was getting a double dose of thread. So this was a very helpful tip. It made my stitches much stronger and much more prominent. All of this gold stitching that is vibrant here is because I doubled the thread as I was stitching. Number eight, use pins to help with placement. I took two of my straight pins that I was using to pin my fabric. I pushed those pins through the back side of my fabric and up through my tissue paper pattern where I needed to mark. So I ended up with a pin sticking up the top of my fabric on both the start and the finish of where the pocket goes. So then I could you know, position my pocket up at the corners of each of those pins. This saves on having to measure the fabric and sit there trying to figure out exactly where the pocket's supposed to land. Number nine, double seam. This one is, I come to learn the very hard way. I spent a lot of time making, you know, bags or different things that I had a lot of care for and love for. And because I did not go in and double stitch, which is to, you run your seam line, then you go back with a second stitch just slightly next to that first seam line, just to give it a reinforced seam. And this prevents that if you have any tearing or, or Pulling on the fabric at its seams, that second stitch line will really help keep it in place. It adds extra strength. And if you do tend to get any bit of tearing or pulling through one of those seams, that second seam line is always there to pick up the slack. Number 10, take your time with curves. It is okay to raise the foot and adjust the positioning. Just remember if you are gonna raise the foot and adjust the fabric that the needle should be still inside the fabric when you do so. So if you have to roll your little knob, push the needle into the fabric so that when you do pick up the foot and turn it, you don't lose your positioning. You don't end up pulling it out too much where you end up with the, these extra long threads that can really make your stitches sloppy and you don't have to be an expert at it. You can just start off sewing just basic things or utilitarian things. Um, you know, when it comes to this jumpsuit, honestly, I'm not giving this to anyone. So if it, if it wasn't quite 100% or my stitches weren't 100% and you know, I have jagged missing spots, who cares? It's for me. It's not like I'm trying to sell this thing. Sewing for me has always been just one of those things that I love to do to kind of de-stress. It's kind of a lot like baking for me, where I love to go in the kitchen and just kind of mellow out. Sewing is that also for me, something about touching and feeling the fibers and the textures and working with them really kind of is meditative for me. Number 11, know where your embellishments are going before you assemble the garment fully. This was really helpful because when I made the first jumpsuit, I fully assembled the garment and then went back in to put on my patches and things like that. And it became really difficult and cumbersome to get things like the main patch I have on the back of my piece and the main patch on while working with a giant piece of, of fabric. And so for this particular jumpsuit, I put on the back patch first before I assembled the top part of the jumpsuit to the bottom pants. Number 12, pre-wash or not pre-wash, okay. I know you are supposed to pre-wash all fabric before you start using it. I despise pre-washing fabric because I don't like the feel when I am sewing, so I am one of those people who totally break this rule. But what I have done for this particular garment 
is I have sized it up by two sizes, which is probably a totally bad idea to do, but I planned for shrinkage. And because I had already stitched one garment and kind of knew how much the shrinkage was gonna be because it was the same type of material, I took a risk at doing so. It worked out in my favor where I didn't have to worry, you know, when it did shrink, it shrank to be fitted just right to where I wanted it to be. This doesn't always work out. So that's my thoughts on pre-washing. You're supposed to do it. I hate doing it. And um, fortunately for this, it worked out to my favor, but can't say that that's always gonna be the case. Number 13, my last and final tip. Okay, and this one is kind of like a bonus tip. So obviously you're working with pins and pins dumped all over the place and I'm like, okay, great, because I have cats rolling all over the place and I didn't want to leave a bunch of pins on the floor. You can take your lint roller and use your lint roller to go and pick up the pins and it's a quick way if then you can then pick off your pins from the lint roller and all of the dust and junk that you did not want to sweep up into your pins stick to the lint roller and you are left with just you know your pins that you needed All right, well, that's basically all I got for you as far as tips go for sewing. So I highly recommend that even if you have never really sewn before or don't have much experience with it, it is worth the investment. Anyways, so thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and tell your friends.